Bayes Estimator, Wikipedia Article Audio In estimation theory and decision theory, a Bayes estimator or a Bayes action is an estimator or decision rule that minimizes the posterior expected value of a loss function. Equivalently, it maximizes the posterior expectation of a utility function. An alternative way of formulating an estimator within Bayesian statistics is maximum a posteriori estimation. Suppose an unknown parameter, theta, is known to have a prior distribution, pi. Let, theta, equals, theta, x, equals, be an estimator of, theta, and let, l, theta, theta, be a loss function, such as squared error. The Bayes risk of, theta, is defined as, e, pi, l, theta, theta, where the expectation is taken over the probability distribution of, theta, this defines the risk function as a function of, theta. An estimator, theta, is said to be a Bayes estimator if it minimizes the Bayes risk among all estimators. Equivalently, the estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss, e, l, theta, theta, x, for each, x, also minimizes the Bayes risk and therefore is a Bayes estimator. Definition Examples If the prior is improper then an estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss for each, x, is called a generalized Bayes estimator. The most common risk function used for Bayesian estimation is the mean square error, also called squared error risk. The MSE is defined by where the expectation is taken over the joint distribution of theta and x. Using the MSE as risk, the Bayes estimate of the unknown parameter is simply the mean of the posterior distribution. This is known as the minimum mean square error estimator. Minimum mean square error estimation If there is no inherent reason to prefer one prior probability distribution over another, a conjugate prior is sometimes chosen for simplicity. A conjugate prior is defined as a prior distribution belonging to some parametric family, for which the resulting posterior distribution also belongs to the same family. This is an important property, since the Bayes estimator, as well as its statistical properties, can all be derived from the posterior distribution. Conjugate priors are especially useful for sequential estimation, where the posterior of the current measurement is used as the prior in the next measurement. In sequential estimation, unless a conjugate prior is used, the posterior distribution typically becomes more complex with each added measurement, and the Bayes estimator cannot usually be calculated without resorting to numerical methods. Posterior mean Following are some examples of conjugate priors. Risk functions are chosen depending on how one measures the distance between the estimate and the unknown parameter. The MSE is the most common risk function in use, primarily due to its simplicity. However, alternative risk functions are also occasionally used. The following are several examples of such alternatives. We denote the posterior generalized distribution function by F. Other loss functions can be conceived, although the mean squared error is the most widely used and validated. Other loss functions are used in statistics, particularly in robust statistics. Bayes estimators for conjugate priors The prior distribution, P, has thus far been assumed to be a true probability distribution, in that Alternative risk functions. However, 
occasionally this can be a restrictive requirement. For example, there is no distribution for which every real number is equally likely. Yet, in some sense, such a distribution seems like a natural choice for a non-informative prior, i.e., a prior distribution which does not imply a preference for any particular value of the unknown parameter. One can still define a function, p, theta, equals, 1, but this would not be a proper probability distribution since it has infinite mass. Posterior Median and Other Chuan Tiles Such measures, p, theta, which are not probability distributions, are referred to as improper priors. The use of an improper prior means that the Bayes risk is undefined. As a consequence, it is no longer meaningful to speak of a Bayes estimator that minimizes the Bayes risk. Nevertheless, in many cases, one can define the posterior distribution. Posterior mode this is a definition, and not an application of Bayes' theorem, since Bayes' theorem can only be applied when all distributions are proper. However, it is not uncommon for the resulting posterior to be a valid probability distribution. In this case, the posterior expected loss is typically well-defined and finite. Recall that for a proper prior, the Bayes estimator minimizes the posterior expected loss. When the prior is improper, an estimator which minimizes the posterior expected loss is referred to as a generalized Bayes estimator. A typical example is estimation of a location parameter with a loss function of the type, L, A, theta. Here, theta is a location parameter, i.e., p, x, theta, equals, f, x, theta. It is common to use the improper prior, p, theta, equals, 1, in this case, especially when no other more subjective information is available. This yields. So the posterior expected loss equals. Generalized Bayes Estimators The generalized Bayes estimator is the value, a, x, that minimizes this expression for a given, x. This is equivalent to minimizing. Example In this case it can be shown that the generalized Bayes estimator has the form, x, plus, a, 0, for some constant, a, 0. To see this, let, A, 0, be the value minimizing when, x, equals, 0. Then, given a different value, x, 1, we must minimize. If, x, theta, is normal, x, theta, n, theta, sigma, 2, and the prior is normal, theta, n, mu, tau, 2, then the posterior is also normal and the Bayes estimator under MSE is given by. This is identical to, except that, a, has been replaced by, a, x, 1. Thus, the expression minimizing is given by, a, x, 1, equals, a, 0, equals A, so that the optimal estimator has the form. A Bayes estimator derived through the empirical Bayes method is called an empirical Bayes estimator. Empirical Bayes methods enable the use of auxiliary empirical data, from observations of related parameters, in the development of a Bayes estimator. This is done under the assumption that the estimated parameters are obtained from a common prior. For example, if independent observations of different parameters are performed, 
then the estimation performance of a particular parameter can sometimes be improved by using data from other observations. If a Bayes rule is unique then it is admissible. For example, as stated above, under mean squared error the Bayes rule is unique and therefore admissible, if theta belongs to a discrete set, then all Bayes rules are admissible, if theta belongs to a continuous, and if the risk function R is continuous in theta for every delta, then all Bayes rules are admissible. There are parametric and non-parametric approaches to empirical Bayes estimation. Parametric empirical Bayes is usually preferable since it is more applicable and more accurate on small amounts of data. Empirical Bayes Estimators Example 2 Properties Admissibility the following is a simple example of parametric empirical Bayes estimation. Given past observations, x, 1, x, n, comma backslash l dots x, having conditional distribution, f, x, i, theta, i, 1 is interested in estimating, theta, n, plus, 1, based on, x, n plus 1 assume that the theta i s have a common prior pi which depends on unknown parameters for example suppose that pi is normal with unknown mean mu pi backslash comma backslash and variance sigma pi dot backslash comma backslash Dot, we can then use the past observations to determine the mean and variance of pi in the following way. First, we estimate the mean mu m backslash comma backslash and variance sigma m backslash comma backslash of the marginal distribution of x one x n comma backslash l dots x, using the maximum likelihood approach. Next, we use the relation where mu f theta and sigma f theta are the moments of the conditional distribution f x i theta i, which are assumed to be known. In particular, Suppose that mu f theta equals theta equals backslash theta and that sigma f 2 theta equals k equals k. We then have finally we obtain the estimated moments of the prior. For example, if x i theta i n theta i 1 backslash theta backslash sim n and if we assume a normal prior we conclude that theta n plus 1 n mu pi sigma pi 2 backslash sim n from which the Bayes estimator of theta n plus 1 based on x n plus 1 can be calculated bayes rules having finite bayes risk are typically admissible the following are some specific examples of admissibility theorems asymptotic efficiency by contrast generalized bayes rules often have undefined bayes risk in the case of improper priors these rules are often inadmissible and the verification of their admissibility can be difficult. For example, the generalized Bayes estimator of a location parameter theta based on Gaussian samples is inadmissible for p 2. This is known as Stein's phenomenon. Let theta be an unknown random variable and suppose that x 1 x 
2, x backslash l dots, are its samples with density, f, x, i, theta. Let, delta, n, equals, delta, n, x, 1, x, n, equals backslash delta, be a sequence of Bayes estimators of theta based on an increasing number of measurements. We are interested in analyzing the asymptotic performance of this sequence of estimators, i.e., the performance of delta n for large n. To this end, it is customary to regard theta as a deterministic parameter whose true value is theta zero. Under specific conditions, for large samples, the posterior density of theta is approximately normal. In other words, for large n, the effect of the prior probability on the posterior is negligible. Moreover, if delta is the Bayes estimator under MSE risk, then it is asymptotically unbiased and it converges in distribution to the normal distribution. Practical example of Bayes estimators Notes Where I is the Fisher information of theta zero. It follows that the Bayes estimator delta n under MSE is asymptotically efficient. Another estimator which is asymptotically normal and efficient is the maximum likelihood estimator. The relations between the maximum likelihood and Bayes estimators can be shown in the following simple example. Consider the estimator of theta based on binomial sample XB where theta denotes the probability for success. Assuming theta is distributed according to the conjugate prior, which in this case is the beta distribution B, the posterior distribution is known to be B. Thus, the Bayes estimator under MSE is the MLE in this case is x slash n and so we get the last equation implies that, for n, the Bayes estimator is close to the MLE. On the other hand, when n is small, the prior information is still relevant to the decision problem and affects the estimate. To see the relative weight of the prior information, assume that A equals B, in this case each measurement brings in one new bit of information, the formula above shows that the prior information has the same weight as A plus B bits of the new information. In applications, one often knows very little about fine details of the prior distribution, in particular, there is no reason to assume that it coincides with B exactly. In such a case, one possible interpretation of this calculation is, there is a non-pathological prior distribution with the mean value 0.5 and the standard deviation d which gives the weight of prior information equal to 1 slash 1 bits of new information. Another example of the same phenomena is the case when the prior estimate and a measurement are normally distributed. If the prior is centered at b with deviation sigma, and the measurement is centered at b with deviation sigma, then the posterior is centered at alpha, alpha, plus, beta, b, plus, beta, alpha, plus, beta, b, b plus b, with weights in this weighted average being alpha equals sigma superscript 2, beta equals sigma superscript 2. Moreover, the squared posterior deviation is sigma superscript 2 plus sigma superscript 2. In other words, the prior is combined with the measurement in exactly the same way as if it were an extra measurement to take into account. For example, if sigma equals sigma slash 2, then the deviation of four measurements combined together matches the deviation of the prior and the weights alpha comma beta in the formula for posterior match this, the weight of the prior is four times the weight of the measurement. Combining this prior with n measurements with average v results in the posterior centered at 4, 4, 
plus n v plus n four plus n v v and v. In particular, the prior plays the same role as four measurements made in advance. In general, the prior has the weight of superscript two measurements. Compare to the example of binomial distribution, there the prior has the weight of superscript 2 1 measurements. One can see that the exact weight does depend on the details of the distribution, but when sigma sigma, the difference becomes small. The Internet Movie Database uses a formula for calculating and comparing the ratings of films by its users including their top-rated 250 titles which is claimed to give a true Bayesian estimate. The following Bayesian formula was initially used to calculate a weighted average score for the top 250, though the formula has since changed. Where Note that W is just the weighted arithmetic mean of R and C with weight vector. As the number of ratings surpasses M, the confidence of the average rating surpasses the confidence of the prior knowledge, and the weighted Bayesian rating approaches a straight average. The closer V is to zero, the closer W gets to C, where W is the weighted rating and C is the average rating of all films. So, in simpler terms, the fewer ratings slash votes cast for a film, the more that film's weighted rating will skew towards the average across all films, while films with many ratings slash votes will have a rating approaching its pure arithmetic average rating. IMDb's approach ensures that a film with only a few ratings, all at 10, would not rank above The Godfather, for example, with a 9.2 average from over 500,000 ratings.